Okay, we're back at SiliconAngle.com's continuous coverage of VMworld 2010 in the Cube with a discussion with venture capitalists who are investing in all the next hot startups, software companies, infrastructure companies. We all know 3PAR, $2 billion is big, big wins out there. Um, and uh, Data Domain was a big acquisition. And uh, we're here with three venture capitalists. To my left is Charles Beeler from El Dorado Ventures, and he's done a, a bunch of storage cloud deals. Pete Sonsini from NEA, and uh, Ping Lee from uh, XL Partners. So guys, welcome welcome to the uh, segment. So first question, we just go down the line real quick. Um, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate the overall investment climate for startups in cloud? Startups in cloud, I'd say uh, pretty close to seven, eight, nine. You know, the, the negative right now is a little bit more around the funding environment than the opportunity for the companies. And I think uh, you, you, as venture guys, we really have to be able to look past that and see the opportunities for the businesses. And unfortunately, you got three groups here who have capital to put to work so you can actually fund these things. It's the biggest challenge we're seeing out there right now. Great. Pete? Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it's definitely eight, nine. If there's a hot sector, enterprise related, it's certainly cloud, cloud related. The, the backdrop as it relates to overall venture climate, you know, casts a, pa a pal and affects the investment uh, in this area a little bit. But everybody knows this is a big change to the ecosystem and it's creating tons of opportunities for new businesses and so everybody's very focused on it or they're, miss they're missing it. Yeah, I agree. I think in terms of uh, areas of excitement, enthusiasm with entrepreneurs, it's definitely nine or ten. I think it, it's not just on the infrastructure side as well. I think if you look across you know, our portfolio, and I'm sure it's the same uh, with Pete and Charles, you know, three quarters of the companies are actually built on cloud infrastructure now so there's no more servers or data rooms in any of the startups that we work with. Um, so I think there's up and down the stack from the applications down to the infrastructure, there's a lot of enthusiasm for uh, what the cloud can bring. Great, same, same, same process right down the line again. Another question is, how do you guys evaluate a company these days? Because it's so easy to fake out a VC if they're not smart about <laughs> throwing some cloud stuff up there, making it look great, got a Rails front end, doing some voodoo. I mean, is there a new model of evaluating an entrepreneur or a startup? In the old days it was, hey, I went to Stanford, got a PhD, I got this unique IP with a patent, now it's a really fast market, things are going crazy. How do you guys look at deals and, and evaluate entrepreneurs and, uh, and startups? I, for me, it still comes down to the team and uh, I don't really care where they went to school. I care what they know about the market they're going after. You know, to the extent they're going, they're going after something in virtualization or cloud player storage, the pedigree matters a lot. Uh, what have they done before that shows they understand the market they're going after? I'm hoping that the entrepreneurs we back know a lot more about the market they're pursuing than I could. So if they're really good at it, uh, you know, I'm not going to keep up on that piece of it. I just want to make sure they understand it, they understand how they fit in the ecosystem and can drive it. And the stage we invest, it, it really is all about the team because good teams have good ideas and they know how to pursue them. Pete? Yeah, I mean, you, you can be aware of the trends, but you don't know everything about everything. There's no way you possibly can. So you, you try to narrow it down to, you know, generally speaking, it's, it's people, it's markets, uh, it's business traction, it's technology. I, I think it, at the end of the day, it comes back to those same four things most of the time. And everybody's got their own personal filter as to what they like to optimize around. Um, I think for the deals that, that we'll do, uh, in one of those four categories, uh, you know, and others, I think one of them really has to be out, off the charts to grab your attention to want to do the deal. Um, but I, I think it still goes back to, you know, people, technology, markets, and, and uh, the, the passion behind the entrepreneur. Does the entrepreneur really have that privilege, insight, and the opportunity? Do they really know this market and this opportunity and how to exploit it better than everybody else? And being the gauge of that is, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that, that's probably the most important thing. Because as I say, you're not going to know you're not going to know everything, everything about everything, and, and uh, you can't expect to get anywhere close to that. So you try to find those those individuals that really do have that key insight, insight to exploit an opportunity. So that's how we would look at it today. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I think the the fundamentals of what we look for in a company hasn't really changed. I think the sectors and trends, as you as you noted, have changed a lot. Um, you know, I think there's still the constant tension that we see between kind of features and actual category defining breakout companies, um, and I think that is uh, you know a lot of times when you see a new market like cloud computing, the first wave of a lot of the ideas are more features or we're trying to evolving existing platforms and then the next generation or the emerging ideas are, are going to be more kind of the category platform type opportunities. So trying to kind of parse out which one is which is, is not an easy task. It's something we spend a lot of time on. I think the other big ch change is uh, capital efficiency. I think a lot of these companies are able to get to market with a lot less capital because the tools and resources, whether it's open source products 
or uh, you know things like EC2, S3, really change how companies can get to market much faster. So that's something we do look for. If you can build it and get to market faster, let's see it as opposed to building for three years and then pray the market's there. I mean, a capital efficiency is a great, entrepreneurs are great at bootstrapping, yep. so they love cloud. It's like, hey, yep. I can do a data center for 20,000 yep. in three countries. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about that. I mean, let's, capital efficiency is one thing, and you guys provide a lot of funding, but now momentum has always been the thing. You could be capital efficient and never, never make the market. So it's about momentum. Where do you guys see the most momentum in cloud, cloud-related things? We have end-user environments with you know, the VDI stuff and some desktop, mobile, obviously, and the middleware, that model's changing, and then infrastructure, the network, and the plumbing, storage. Where do you guys see the most momentum and most fertile for entrepreneurs uh, to stay, a safe harbor, if you will? Do you see that, anything out there? Uh, I, t I mean, clearly the place you're going to see the most momentum is the closer you get to the end user of a product. The, it, if something's getting adopted quickly and ramping quickly, and if, if you're hosting that cloud, it's a lot easier to get deployment, continue to deploy, and meet that scale. I think as you look at more of the infrastructure, the guts and things that are going on, we're pretty big believers that while virtual desktop is still early in terms of uh, enterprise usage, we think it's at the point now with technologies evolved far enough that it's ready to go. Uh, we made a bet in it recently. We just we think that's a market that's starting to, to gain momentum, and when it happens, we think it will happen quickly. Um, I think in a lot of these other areas, there are great opportunities, but in some ways it's still company specific. If someone really figures out how to take advantage of a technology and leverage something, whether it's software, infrastructure, network, uh, it's more the company getting it and getting it right. And you're, you're seeing that today, and you mentioned some of these acquisitions. It's companies who figure that out, who've understood how to get that wave and catch it and hit it at the right time. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, you know you want to get it. You want to get in before the momentum hits. I mean, that's really where the money's made in, in venture capital is, is getting in ahead of the waves before they all hit. And uh, you know, so so there's certainly excitement. There's plenty of excitement around the cloud to, to spread around. And and uh, you know, you point out which areas you like the best. Which ones? Do you yeah. So I, I think that you point out platform as a service and private clouds. There's a lot of excitement around there right now. And I think it's because it's. You know, it's it's kind of open field. It's, it's it, there's there's huge growth prospects ahead of it. There's no real dominant player, and the venture investors' minds kind of go wild. You know, kind of go crazy thinking about where you know how big this opportunity could be without really that many proof points. Yeah. Categories not ca formed. You're saying categories not formed yet. There's That's no right. one, two, and three. That's right. The proof. You know, it, it, with private clouds, just taking private clouds for, as an example, there's clearly a lot of interest and in, in talk around IT organizations about private clouds. People are talking about it. How many deployments are there? There's actually, you know, not, you know, not commensurate with the hype, and so, you know, you have to discount that back. And so, um, you know, there's still a lot of interest. There's there are always going to be interest from venture investors and things like that. But at the end of the day, you know, you're taking a leap of faith that it materialize, and, and something like that is just not there yet. Yeah. Well, you had data domain in your firm, a data domain acquisition. That was a big exit. Three par just went, went or going to HP. It looks like so. You know, there's big deals to be had. I mean, big, big oh, yeah, I mean, deals. You know, there's, uh, you know, as it relates to virtualization and cloud, it's really shaking up the entire stack. We all know that. We all know it's a, it's a big change, and all these areas are presenting huge opportunities for new businesses and really novel technology to come in and capitalize on them. And uh, even though traditional areas like storage, which is, you know, storage. I mean, it's it's boring old storage, but no, it's I'm crazy. Not. Yeah, the crazy. Yeah, storage exactly. rules. Yeah, exactly. But it's but crazy things happen, and, and there's a lot of innovation to be had. Um, as it relates to cloud, and yeah, Ch Charles knows what companies that, that he has has this this ping. So, um, uh, ping, you you're on the board of an investment that you have called Cloudera, which we're familiar with. They're friends of ours in Palo Alto. Um, they service the Hadoop platform, and it's an open source project, commercializing it. But you have big cloud players out there that have a product that they don't sell; they just use, like Facebook, Google, Amazon. So, so there's a whole other world of big data, and and data is the big theme in this, in this conference and the world. What is your view of that trend of data, the tsunami of data, as Mike Olson would say at Cloudera? What, do, what yeah. was your view on that? Yeah, I, I think it ties really well into a lot of the conversations I think you got, you're having around virtualization and cloud computing. Because if you look at what cloud computing is doing, it's actually reinventing the entire computing stack from, you know, was, there was mainframe, there was client server, there's web, and now there's cloud computing. So I think there's opportunities at all the layers uh, of the stack. And I think what Cloudera is focused on is around the data layer. And I think what you mentioned that the big data trend is one that one could argue started in the web world because they were pushing the envelopes of data when Facebook, Yahoo, and Google were collecting click streams and, and uh, trolling the entire web to figure out you know, what's, what's uh, relevant to, uh, to different people. And I think that amount of data has really pushed the envelope with today's database technologies. I think what 
Cloudera and Hadoop is trying to do is change the boundaries of what data can do and what database technology and, and, and data management technologies can do. So I think one thing we've seen at Cloudera is everyone's got big data. Uh, we, most of the customers we talk to always start off with a terabyte before the end of the conversation they finally have petabytes. So the reason why people didn't have all the data no, back then is because they were throwing them away. There was no cheap, efficient way to store and derive value from uh, semi-structured and unstructured data, so they were kind of going to waste. And I think now with technologies such as Hadoop, you can really change that, that paradigm around, and you can do analytics, you can do um, a lot more data, data management capabilities you couldn't do before. It's hard to think of a better guy than Mike Olson to run something like that, yeah. too. Yeah, he's a, good, yeah. he's a good guy, great guy. Um, the question about scale and startups dynamics, so let's talk about, uh, from a startup's perspective, um, they're out there, they can deal with, and Super Angels have been in the news, we've covered that on SiliconANGLE. You guys are venture capitalists, and you deal with big deals. If, if I'm efficient to get started off the ground, what advice do you have to an entrepreneur out there? They want a good VC, they want to have someone who's not going to screw them over, they want someone who's going to grow with them, help them navigate, and reduce their risk as well, and go to the market, be successful. So what advice do you have to entrepreneurs out there about navigating the, I need to get financed, I have a prototype, I'm going to fill this white space of a VMware platform or do this and that. What was your, what was your advice be? I'm sure we agree that you just go to El Dorado, start there, <laughs> <laughs> do your Series B with one of these guys. Uh, hey, in a lot of ways, it really depends on what your business is. We talked about capital efficiency, but if you're building a storage solution, if you're building complex technology, it's going to take 12 to 18 months to build and get to market. Uh, you got to be funded to get through that point. Uh, the hardest financings today are the Series B financings for these companies. If you don't appropriately fund your company through the Series A, give yourself time to get to market, get the product out, have some customers work with it. It's going to be really hard to raise a good follow-on financing round. As an entrepreneur, you suffer the most, frankly, because you've suffered dilution from that. Uh, more capital efficient deals, uh, you know, and I've heard some really smart super angels say the same thing. The, the best deals they've ever done, they may have done it on their own initially, but most of those over time take enough capital that to not raise venture money would be a very challenging thing to do uh, to really build it appropriately. So you're on. saying if you want to build a real big business, go to a serious VC? Uh, absolutely, and, and if you need to start, if you want to start small with a few million bucks because your idea only takes that to start, great. Most of the companies that we're seeing in cloud space are not companies that are going to get to profitability on $2 million. And as an entrepreneur, if you really think that's going to happen, you should look very hard at your business and look at all the comps around your business and see how many of them were able to do it. And if none of them were, you got to ask the question, what's so unique about our model that's different or should we be planning to, to get more capital well, over most, time? Most, most entrepreneurs don't know that angels tend not to do follow-on financing so that if it's an intensive deal that needs more cash, they may not pony up more. Right. right? Yeah. He uses I, a lot I, of I, would just, I mean, I would just add that, you know, when you're, as an entrepreneur, looking at a venture firm or an angel, you, you obviously need to pick a firm that is going to have some money to be, to, to be there for successive financing. I mean, uh, people don't knock that out of the park every time after their first financing. Usually they have, they have successive deals and it's an up and down ride. So you need to have a firm that, that obviously has money and it has deeper, has, you know, there's obviously contraction. Value the, add. They want value add. Well, there's certainly value add, but the point I was making is that there's contraction in the venture business right now. And so there's a lot of pressure on firms who aren't going to be able to raise future funds. So you got to feel good that there's going to be funding there for you down the road is obviously yeah. obviously very important. And you need to have, uh, you have to feel good about who you're working with, obviously. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the value add is important. I mean, the, the network that the firm brings, the experience that they have in building companies is actually, we feel like it's worth something. I mean, we've, we've, we've done that before. And, and you've got uh, successes under your belt. You've got a lot of success. Yeah, and we, we think that that can help. So, and, I mean, we have a bench of entrepreneurs that can you know, speak on our behalf and, and hopefully say the same thing, but that's the way we look at References it. References are a big thing, right? You're, yeah, what I, you're mean, saying. I think it matters. But a big part of that value add, as Pete said, is, is having access to additional capital from your initial funding sources. Knowing that when push comes to shove, if things are going well, but you're having a hard time raising money out in the market, you can come back to your existing group of investors and continue to scale the business the way it, it needs to be scaled or should be scaled to be successful. And that is that is a component of being value add to those companies, is being there when they need you to really support them through those times. Yeah. Ping, you work for a blue chip in Excel. They're, you know, earned their reputation over the years. Obviously, the Facebook's a big investment. They've got a slew of other great investments, and you've got a good track record in cloud. What do you say to, to the folks out there saying, oh, just go super angel? There's some dilution, not just in capital, but reputation, don't you think? You know, I, I, ex I think the angels are, or the super angels are uh, an important part of the ecosystem for startups. Um, I think we work with a lot of angels. We have angels in Cloudera. Uh, uh, we have angels in a lot of our companies. So I think they definitely provide an important, um, uh, you know, segment of, of the 
creation of startups uh, more and more today than ever because the capital but efficiency isn't, isn't is a super is angel going. just a fund? No, I think I think they they provide value add just yeah. like just like a VC will. I think for me it's more the entrepreneur needs to decide what they want and where they want the company to go. And I think uh, and figuring what the business needs should be able to help you figure out if you go with angels, you go with VCs, you go with both, you go with a combination, you bring people at different times. So I don't think there is there's one formula, but I, I do encourage entrepreneurs not to feel there's only one way to do it. There's probably more than one way to do it and take the time to figure it out. And I think the most important thing is get to know the people that will be investing in your company. Spend I, the time to get to know the VC. We're all very accessible. We return yeah, yeah. emails, phone calls, whatever it takes. And that's true for the angels. Get to know everyone and I think that will help you in, make the right decisions. I, I saw a quote recently that said, it's very hard to get an investor to come into your company, but it's 10 times harder to get them out. And yeah. to Faith's point, I mean, you, you, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. gotta get it right, because it can it right. absolutely kill a company if you get the wrong ones in. Yeah, and, you, and if you run out of cash yeah. too, you're out yeah. of business. Yeah. I heard that too, somewhere. Um, <laughs> I've heard it, uh, quick, never seen it. Quick, <laughs> you can't go out of business if you have money in the bank. Um, Pete, uh, guys, can you guys comment on Facebook? What is the phenom of Facebook? Obviously, it's a cloud play for themselves. It's a huge platform, growing at scale. Uh, I know, Ping, your company has the big data business and trying to figure out clustering. Google has that. But talk about Facebook in particular, growing. A very short history. Uh, is that a cloud play for enterprises to look at? Is it a unique uh, data point? Is that cloud? Any, any takers on that question? I'm going to look at the expert. The last time I sat on a panel with Ping was three weeks after they did the initial investment in Facebook. And I still couldn't get in because it was only for college I mean, kids. I so. mean, they are operating at scale. They use our open source. They're writing their own code. Um, it is a cloud kind of place. Yeah, I mean, I think you know we've had uh, a lot of conversations with different enterprise architects who are curious in, in terms of how Facebook has built their data center. I think whether it's you know Facebook, Google, Yahoo, or Amazon, it's it's very interesting seeing how these internet data centers are becoming thought leaders in terms of where some of the new groundbreaking technologies are, whether it's in the storage layer, or networking, or compute layer. Uh, you know, Facebook's an early adopter of a lot of these technologies just because they were pushing the boundaries of what can be done with existing platforms. Do you think it's a proof system. point, though, of what, uh, as a roadmap for the enterprises to look at, or is it just a unique one-off? I, I think it is. I think you have to be careful about just transplanting things that were done yeah. for a consumer web property and all the, the nuances that you need for an enterprise environment. But I think absolutely, just like a lot of consumer companies like Facebook use enterprise technologies, right? So I think it's just... Uh, an evolution of you know what they're building will be adapted. I think a lot of the private cloud stuff that we're investing in is very much borrowing from a lot of the quote unquote public cloud understandings and then bringing that to an enterprise environment. So you know you talk to the enterprise IT guys and the CIOs are saying to the architects, we want one of those Amazon things yeah, here. Yeah, inside the right? building. Yeah, that's what yeah, they're yeah. saying, right? So I think I think there's uh, I think that's one trend. I think the other trend is the we want Amazon but we don't want them to have it. We don't want them to have it, right. <laughs> uh, and then the other thing is applications are getting rewritten for different ways. In other words, people are building applications for EC2 and S3 that are web-based cloud type applications. As more of these type applications get built, they're going to end up in the enterprise. Yeah. And then the infrastructure is going to have to adapt to the application. So I think that cycle just keeps going. Pete, Pete, for you, question for you. You've been in the, you have a lot of experience in the enterprise, obviously. And IT was a sector that kind of went dark from a venture perspective. Seems to be coming back with cloud. How are the enterprise and IT changing as a marketplace? When I say market, I mean like a, a market for entrepreneurs. Um, what what do you see that's different now from when you were in the enterprise? I mean, you worked at HP, uh, you worked at uh, some startups in the enterprise. It's, it's changing. What are, what yeah, are your... Yeah, well, I mean, you know, when I was, I mean, before I got in the venture business, you know, six, seven years ago, the whole social media, uh, you know, consumerization of IT was not really happening. So that's a huge change that's imp impacting the enterprise IT landscape. And it's it's got, you know, IT executives running around uh, with their hair on fire and how to deal with. So, I mean, that's... In the world of IT, that's a huge change since I was in the business eight or nine years ago, and it's still a, you know, it's an unsolved problem. I mean, there's nobody knows exactly how, you know, what the right answer is with all these these iPads and so forth entering the world. So, at the at the same